Good afternoon, student. Today, start chapter number seven, basics of internet topic: social networking website. Social networking website. Social networking website. It is the platform where people share social relations with their friends, family, people who share similar personal and care, interesting activity, etc. Okay. So, so what is social network site it is the platform where the people sharing social relation with their friends family people okay next your activity page number 125 find out the 10 social networking website so, so total networking website is facebook youtube instagram twitter reddit and ask fm and Flickr and google plus and meetup and but do you know a social networking website okay clear next features of social networking site features of social networking site will help us to be in touch with our family friends and colleagues next point you can also share our experience clear you can also share our experience and next we can share our interest and hobbies with other and next we can also play games and share our sports with other people and companies can be used this site in market their new products available in the market clear features of social network website sabko malum hai right it is the help us to be touch with our family friends and colleagues and to we can also share our experience and we can share our interest and hobbies with other and we can also play games and share our scores with other people can companies can be use this site to market their new product available in the market and latest new social networking site see video welcome back to the most amazing top 10 my name is danny burke and you guys are watching me on youtube which is kind of technically classed as a social network yes me and you are apparently socializing right now is youtube on this list if so what position is it at how popular is your favorite social media site or app well let's find out right now as we jump into the top 10 biggest social media websites and apps coming at number 10 we have Beidou Taiba those of you familiar with social media in China will have heard of Beidou Taiba but a lot of people including myself might not have even been aware at all the Chinese website attracts over 300 million unique monthly users it has two main aspects to it firstly it acts as a sort of search engine for users to find news about current affairs or maybe their favorite celebrity now if that had never been been searched before it then gets added to their database but if other people have searched for it the site will bring up the page as a topic with live updates of people discussing it allowing you to search and then join online communities in an instant the site was founded in 2004 and the company's slogan is born for your interest pretty catchy i like that one moving on to number nine we have twitter now when twitter was founded in march 2006 even the developers of it didn't really expect its explosive growth 313 million people visit it every single month to tweet out their thoughts in 140 characters or less or retweet other people's tweets or search for hashtags to see what people are saying about a certain topic now it's this thing the hashtags that help launch it from just another social media site to the fastest most effective way of sharing thoughts in real time to people this has led the makers of twitter to define it as more of an information network rather than a social network now in 2013 a record was actually set in japan during the tv screening of the movie castle in the sky where there were 143,000 tweets a second about it wow that makes me kind of want to go and watch that right now Next up at number eight, we have Instagram with 500 million active users. That's right. Every month, about half a billion individual people visit the picture and video sharing platform. It's one of the newer ones on this list too, being founded in 2010. It grew fast though, reaching 100 million active users by April 2012, at which point it was bought by Facebook for $1 billion. Now it's especially popular among the younger demographics. One study found that 66% of all US teens 
teens are active on Instagram. New aspects of Instagram, such as Boomerang and its new story mode, have helped it continue to grow at an impressive rate. Coming in at number seven now, we have Tumblr. 555 million people visit Tumblr a month. It started out as a micro-blogging site in 2007, allowing users to share their thoughts or things they find on the internet to those who follow their blog. Now, it's this simplicity that's the reason it got so big. And one of the main aspects has been the reblogging feature, which allows people to instantly share content from another user, which always links back to that blog. Now, it looks very simple, too. It's quite pleasing to the eye. Some of my friends say it's so easy to get the hang of, but make an account a few times and I just can't get my head around Tumblr. I don't think I'm made for blogging. Moving on to number six now, we have Qzone. This is another Chinese site on our list which pulls in 652 million visitors a month. To give you guys an idea of how big that number is, it's about twice the population of the US. Now it's quite appropriate that it follows Tumblr on our countdown because it's kind of like the Chinese equivalent to it. You can blog, you can share music, pictures, and videos, just like many other blog sites, but one way it differs from most Western sites is that Qzone actually costs money if you want to access everything. Users can pay monthly for a VIP service called Canary Yellow Diamond, which lets them customize their page and have background music as well as a whole bunch of other features. Would you guys pay monthly for social media? Like every time you log into Facebook, you have to pay? I don't know, I like the sound of that. At number five now, we've got WeChat. This was actually developed by Tencent, the same Chinese company who developed the last site we talked about. These links between them are just writing themselves. WeChat has 806 million monthly users, most of whom are Chinese. Now to me, WeChat looks like the one-stop shop for people wanting to stay connected in China. As well as being a messaging service, users also have video calls, they play games, they share pictures, and even use it to pay for bills and order things online. It has everything. They even have a special version for employees of a company to clock in and out of work and even ask their employers for time off. Wow. Now apparently WeChat can even take your dog for a walk. Okay, maybe I made that last one up, but the point I'm trying to make here is that WeChat does everything and it's absolutely everywhere in China. And next up at number four, we're staying with China now because we have QQ. This is another Chinese social media site that attracts 889 million people to it a month. It's also owned by the same company as the last two, Tencent. I'm starting to think they might be quite rich. Like the last one on our list, QQ is an instant messaging service. But what makes it stand out from all the others? Well, aside from offering messaging, music, and voice chat, QQ is well known for being a mobile games hub. Now, this is the oldest one on our list, as it was founded back in 1999. Yeah, before some of you guys were born. That's sad. But not me. Yeah. In the beginning, it was basically just a pretty poor copy of AOL's instant messaging service, but over the years, their features brought in millions of new users. QQ actually holds the Guinness World Record for the highest number of simultaneous online users. On July 3rd, 2014, over 210 million people were using that site at the same time. That meant that about 3% of the whole planet was logged into that site. That's mental. Coming in at number three now, we have a more recognizable app to a lot of you guys, Facebook Messenger. One billion people use this thing a month. For many years, Facebook had a built-in Messenger service, but that all changed when they released Messenger. It came out in 2011, and by 2014, Facebook users had to download the Messenger app if they wanted to keep chatting on Facebook in the same way as before. Now, some people, expectedly, weren't really happy with this, but Facebook did have their reasons. They said their old messaging service was just too clunky and slow to get to and that any app can only do one job really well. So instead of having the Facebook app do two jobs badly, they made a whole separate app for messaging. Now, thanks to the integration with Facebook and features such as video calling, Messenger has become one of the biggest messenger apps in the world. But it's not the biggest because that title belongs to our number two, WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a true global giant, boasting over 1.1 billion users. Before WhatsApp, other messaging services required you to add new contacts, but that person also had to be using the same program too. But WhatsApp was different. As soon as you signed up, all the contacts you really needed were already there because it took it straight from your phone's contact list and almost everyone has a phone number that you know. Another key feature was that it was cross-platform too, which was a huge appeal to many people who couldn't use brand-specific 
specific services such as iMessage. So the app spread like wildfire because any phone could use it and your contacts were ready to go. It was founded in 2011 by developers Brian Acton and Jan Coombe who were rejected by Facebook to work there. But they had the last laugh though because the popularity of WhatsApp meant that by 2014, Facebook actually bought the company for $19.3 billion. That's right guys, Facebook owned the last one on our list. They owned WhatsApp as well and they definitely own our number one because it is Facebook. Every single month, 1.71 billion people log into Facebook. That's 23% of the entire world population right now. That means almost a quarter of all living humans use it on a regular basis. It's come a long way from its very humble beginnings back in 2004 when it was launched by Mark Zuckerberg. Now, it was originally closed to the wider public for testing and was only really kept on college campuses, but on September 26, 2006, finally, anyone over the age of 13 could make a Facebook profile. It became an overnight success, with users flocking to its clean, easy layout compared to other social media giants at the time, such as MySpace. By limiting the access at first, they made Facebook kind of cool before Facebook was even really a thing. Once they captured the younger demographics this way, media attention drew millions more to the site. Facebook soon became a way for friends and family to stay connected and easily see what their loved ones were doing in their lives. The people seemed to love it, and with such high user interaction, the companies and the sponsors loved it too. Facebook simply wiped out all other competitors as it became the one-stop shop to stay in touch with everyone you know. Now, for some people over the years, it has become a little bit too much for them, and they sometimes see Facebook as a bit too intrusive or overbearing in their lives. But as long as there are no competitors to stop it, Facebook Facebook is still steamrolling ahead, and its growth continues to outpace everyone. I've honestly considered deleting my Facebook a few times, but then I think, what will I waste all my time on? I'm not really sure. I didn't think that one through. But guys, what is your favorite social media site? What is your least favorite? Do you think they will last forever? Yes, I know I have.